Hey everybody, it's Amy Astro here and welcome back to my channel. If you recall, last week we were talking about flats and what equipment I was using. This week I'm going to show you how I accomplish my flats. We're going to use the Pegasus Astro Flat Master and we will tie it together with Secrets Generator Pro. So, let's get started. So first, let me give a shout out to the gentleman who made the comment on my post on uh, when I made the comment that the Flatmaster did not have enough of a lip for me to hang it on the end of my telescope. So he had a solution and ah, I can't believe I didn't think of it because I have so much of this laying around. A piece of black foam core, cut a circle out of it, the same size as my Flatmaster, pushed it onto the existing screws that came with it and then I added these little standoffs to it that came with the Flatmaster and everything is snug together. That gives me just enough lip that I can safely hang it off the end of my telescope and everything works great. So thank you so much for that wonderful idea. I appreciate it. I incorporated it. I love it. All right, so let's talk about flats. Now, the whole purpose of flats is for us to get rid of those ugly dust bunnies that we all have. I mean, let's face it, no matter what we do, we are going to have spots on our lens, on our filters. There's just no way to get around it. So that's why you need to take flats. Flats are the cure-all for the dust bunny, okay? A flat is a image that's taken at an even light source, okay, even all the way across and it just shines right through those dust bunnies and it shows where each one appear in your image, okay? And then through the magic of processing, you can take your flats, merge them together with your image, and voila, the dust bunnies are gone. Okay, so you either need yourself like a flat master panel or an LED panel, and you light up your images by as simple as taking the flat master, and I shall hang it off the end of my telescope. Now I'll take a USB 2 port, I will wire it to a USB plug, power it on, and let's hop over to the computer. Alright guys, so I'm over here in Sequence Generator Pro and I just quickly wanted to show you all how I set up a flat session. Okay, now I took images over two nights and I'm going to go ahead and take flats for each of those nights because I don't know what happened along the way, you know, um, mostly it's the focus has changed each night. One night was extremely humid, the other night was not. So the focus points varied some. So to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and take images at each focus point. Now, the first night I took hydrogen alpha, oxygen, a few red, and some sulfur too. And I've gone ahead and set them up where I'm going to take 40 images and these are the exposure times that work well with this flat panel. But let's say you don't know what those numbers are. This is how you would go ahead and get them. Go under Tools, Flat Calibration Wizard, and let's choose the profile that I took the images with. So we'll go to Choose. And I used my Explorer Scientific 102 with the ZWO 1600 monochrome camera, had the night crawler on it with a 0.8 reducer. Okay, and it's warning me right now that it's going to create a brand new sequence for me. That's fine. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's say yes. And here it is loading up a blank sequence. And this is just so I can get my numbers. All right, here we go. And notice it has already set up the camera and the filter wheel to help with these calculations. Now, what you can do is right at the beginning, let's say you want to do luminance, you want to do red, and I'm only binning one by one. I've never tried the other bins, so I'm not real familiar with how to use them, and I'm just not ready for that step yet in this little um, hobby. 
So let's go ahead and I'm going to select all the filters one by one binning, okay? And I'm going to shrink these up so we can see them. Okay, now the target mean, I just leave it at the 30,000 ADU. I give it a 500 tolerance. And all I'm really going to do right now is hit start. And it's going to go through and take images with the flat panel on it and calculate what is the best exposure to accomplish close to 30,000 ADU. Check out all those dust buddies that I've got. It is time for me to do some cleaning of these filters. I mean, these are just crazy. But it was so humid that first night, I am not surprised by these. But what's nice to know is thanks to taking flat frames, I don't have to worry about these in my images at all because they are going to vanish. Well, it is wrapping up on the last filter here, which is the Sulfur 2. I'm going to scroll back and look at some of these times. Oxygen needs about 10 seconds, 10.15 seconds. Hydrogen alpha needs 41.92 seconds. Uh, blue is 1.24 seconds. Green, 1.49 seconds. And red is 1.76. Now, I could dim down or brighten this up a little bit, but then I would be well below this one second mark. See, I'm already at half, half a second here. So if I made it any brighter, the luminance would probably be down at 0.2 seconds. And I'd just leave it at the brightness it's at right now. And I can live with the 40 seconds. Now, oh goodness, sulfur is 67.57 seconds. So that's about a minute an image there. So that one's gonna take the longest time. But now that it has calculated the proper time that I need, all I have to do is hit the Save button. It will save it to my profile. So when I go and set up my next image session, it's already pre-programmed in. So now that we have our exposure time set using the flat wizard, I have created myself a sequence. And what I've done is I had two different nights worth of images that I took. And this was the second night on the 2nd of September. And I took blue, green, luminance, and red. And what I did is I went back and I looked at the focus points that I had for each image and I wrote them down. And then I wrote down the rotation of the camera for the image run. Okay, and to make this easy for myself, I've always named my files to have the filter name, the exposure time, the focus point, and my rotation right built into the file name. Okay, so I already know my focus point and my rotation. I have set my, foc my focuser to be the focus point for the blue frames, and I've set my rotation of my night crawler for this entire run. Now what I've done here is I've created a pause between each line item. And the reason for that is I wanted to make a pause so I can change my focus point over here for the next filter. It takes a little bit longer this way, but this way I can guarantee that things will match up when it comes time to start processing, okay? So I have my focus point for blue and my rotation for the run, and I'm gonna say resume my sequence. And it's gonna come through. It is setting my blue filter. All right, that took a minute. And it took the first image. It's downloading it. And as you can see, I have some massive dust bunnies, but without these flat frames, these dust bunnies would permanently reside in my final image. So it is really, really great practice to take your flat frames. Now I'm gonna let this run through. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take 30 images and when this completes, I'll come back and I'll show you the whole routine for the green filter. All right, so here we go. We are getting ready to start the next filter. Here's my pause event and it's pausing everything until I say resume my sequence. So I'll say okay here. 
Now my green filter, let's look at my notes here. I had a focus of 64389, and I'm going to say OK. My rotation stays the same throughout this entire run. And now I'm going to say resume sequence, and it's going to go ahead and take this. And I will rinse and repeat this same process until I get all the way down to the red. Well, guys, this has been a very, very long video to create today, thanks to a Windows update. But I hope you enjoyed this. This is me running through my current flat routine setup. And today I am now using the Pegasus Astro Flat Master. Um, I really do like it. It has its quirks every now and then. I just have to remind myself that it's very faint and I need to turn the lights off sometimes just to make sure it is running. I'm hoping in their newer versions that they add a little red dummy light to it so I at least know when it has power on it because that light I think would really help me know that the light panel is on. So guys, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit like below and just know that I love each and every one of you. I'm wishing you all great health, clear skies, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye, y'all.